make a very good job. And uh, he's now chairing uh, the Homodialysis Afran Committee. Welcome, Shem. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Abdul, colleagues and friends and brothers in Africa. And thank you very much for uh, giving me the light to grow and to go as well in the field of Africa. And I have uh, the courage to say that after years of flying away from Africa, we had successfully landed to land we are all belongs. So the achievement is first, we landed successfully and correctly to the land we belong. We apologize that we are away for a while, but definitely we can compensate that urgently and fastly with speedily. So the spirit of the success comes from the, our union, definitely inspired by a friendship and responsibilities, putting a stone today for a wall of progress and achievement. Our statement here and today is to confess that our activities are all belonging to the land we are growing, either me or my ground. So the team of uh, hemodialysis committee had been selected from different countries. And based on that, there is a chair and a co-chair. We uh, focus that on the scientific material first, but the roadmap is different. I can show that, that the steps of my scope is contacting the team. We all contacting the uh, hemodialysis team, adding locally or nationally uh, serving members, then identifying the goals, what we are and where we go, targeting both education and, and the training, implementing services, and finally, we can have a dynamic monitoring. So we are in the second or third stages of identifying the goals and the targeting the educational as well as the training. The team hierarchy containing of chairs, co-chairs, moderators, members, ICT, uh, internet protocols, national subgroupings, and all are the same equal pieces of activity. No bigger pieces. It is the same puzzle and any missing piece will make the photo is not correct. So the team steps meaning that we have a team, we have an educational mission, we can do a half for training physically, and we have to publish hemodialysis guideline based on our experiences in the field of regulations, then implementing the service. And our scope, meaning that my title is the hemodialysis or any dialysis or in Africa, more service saves life. So this is the approach we are in need. So all countries in the Africa are uh, uh, examples here and uh, contributing for the success and the progress of the hemodialysis will making some hubs and these hubs, depending on the location and geographic, we can make hubs in Egypt, in Africa, uh, South Africa, we can make in Senegal, Cameroon, or in the west or the east or the middle, because we have to build centers uh, are uh, more in experts in dialysis, and they can do physical training for both uh, doctors as well for the nurses. We all know that hemodialysis in Africa is a long time ago, and it's around 50 years of experience, and so we know the knowledge. Uh, of how to do the answer. What is the challenges is a lot uh, of more of than more steps and growing these challenges by day. So what's about in Africa in treating acute kidney injury? It is long away. It is depending on the from 1960. And secondly, on the maintenance hemodialysis way, we can find that at least from the 80s, we have dialysis program in many countries. So what is the problem? The problem is defined here in this to a couple of slides, the need for evidence informed decision making and the budgets, financial feasibilities, clinical optimization, which and of distribution equity. There is no equity in the world. Not only for the healthcare, but in all kinds of the world. There is no any equity. We face that in the COVID last couple of years. Civil and financial constraints meet the high opportunity cost for dialysis, particularly. Uh, challenging. In, in one paper as well, Professor Gloria and Professor Abdeniak had been identified that the heavy medical and non-medical financial burden for patients who are given dialysis means that 59% in people in sub-Saharan Africa stop dialysis 
while it is still indicated, meaning that that a systemic review highlighted very poor outcomes from end-stage kidney disease in the region where mortality up to 80% among incident cases, again, lacking of the finance. The number of people requiring dialysis in one calendar year had been expected that to be in the left panel where the around 19% in Kenya, 75% in Nigeria, Senegal. And on the right panel, you can find how to could be translated to a money pay. You can find that we need at least 3.5 trillion of the USD to pay for dialysis and it's equivalent between 15 to 55% of the total domestic governmental health expenditure. Too much payment. So the spilling the meters of providing dialysis is our first step to catch the problem and to find a solution. And this is first step had been popping in our mind. I will not highlight all of them, but we need to know that we need a manpower, we need an educational, we need a training program, we need uh, as well cooperations with our friends in everywhere to translate our experiences to be meeting the uh, actual requirement. The cost of dialysis, I understand that it is different from country to country, depending on the manpower fees and disposables and whatever capital cost, but we can transfer how Egypt can do perfect dialysis with the support of the government with the least reimbursement rate, about 25 USD per session. So dialysis care around the world, a global uh, perspective, you can find that how many patients per million of that, Whatever the country, developing countries, you have different proposal, but if you go to the Africa, you find that below 100 uh, patients per million. This is, does not mean that they don't have renal failure. They don't have any way to treat their patients by renal replacement therapy, either hemoperitoneal dialysis or hemodialysis. And this is the current cost. We can decrease the current cost by uh, paying uh, less for dialysis. So how we can achieve global equity in provision and the renal replacement therapy, and this is delivering renal replacement therapy in low and medium income countries, despite a, a probable heavy burden of end-stage kidney disease in that country. WHO is that saying that how we can achieve a global equity in provision of renal replacement therapy, and this is a problem of the world, not only for the African nations. So the future, the future needs support to low income countries and transferring the technology and the human resources, saving lives and human uh, hemodialysis committee is designed to serve nephrologists to drive for a better dialysis surface. And this is the geographical factors put in mind. We can, uh, as Professor Dr. Alasha says, that geographical disturbances in Africa make uh, too much difficulties in that so we can use peritoneal dialysis to uh, cities or areas not available for hemodialysis because we have to go rapidly to save uh, lives. Hemodialysis knowledge based approach, hemodialysis in, uh, initiatives, central rules for that, and the urgent need for that needing uh, cooperation for the reimbursements from the government and so we have to talk to the government and the healthcare provider in each country separately to increase the demand for the payment of the patient on kidney disease. So the hemodialysis will start, it, actually started in a hemodialysis uh, curriculum with a comprehensive handout hemodialysis training is necessary uh, for effective training as well for optimal patient care. And all our mission is for this hemodialysis curriculum is to put a video live tabbing to access anywhere, anytime, at your convenient time, and in both English as well in French language, and with interactive session to enhance learning engagement and the knowledge-based testing. So this is a lot of the uh, already material we put in mind to start this hemodialysis curriculum, and we allocated that for and assigned it for professors from different countries. We all. Uh, uh, very sad for the, our grief loss of uh, Professor Anthony Ware, who I think is what this man who gathered the African countries, including Egypt at the moment. We gathered together at the catastrophe of the pandemic of COVID-19. However, it was my first time to contact uh, my friends. And again, it's my 
courage that to say I apologize that over, over this year I didn't land in my grandfather land and I hope that on the next steps of years we can return it back to our lands we belong. And this is uh, on our activities we started the international cooperation in ISN during our uh, COVID-19 guidelines, translating that from Egyptian remote analysis guideline, Egyptian COVID-19 guideline and deadly disease, and translated that perfectly to our colleagues and friends, published in uh, papers and documents in the Afrin as well in the ISN. We represent ourselves for these guidelines, and this is perfectly Professor Dr. Hen has been highlighted, and this is one piece of success in how the team can cooperate. We meet along one year, me and Professor Mohammed Salah from Egypt, all over one year to do a guideline, to be an African guideline and how to deal, to be stabilized and to be distributed on all of the countries uh, in Africa to have a harmony of the management of the Afrin patients, COVID-19 and the kidney disease. I think it is one of the greatest success, not only as a guideline, but incorporation again and returning back again of friends together to sit and decide what is, uh, should be done for our uh, pilons. Again, Egypt at the heart of Africa and will carry its responsibilities for Af African analysis need. The hemodialysis committee is designed to serve nephrologists to drive for a better dialysis service and patients. 